Hello, uh, my name is Julian Glover. I'm an actor and I'm appearing on CGM. Good day. Vous avez commencé votre carrière dans les années 50, mais qu'est-ce qui vous a donné envie d'être un acteur au départ How much time do we have uh, <laughs> I was at school and uh, with no idea of being an actor and I was about 15 and the young English master who went on to become someone who founded the National Youth Theatre of Great Britain but he wasn't then, he was just from my school decided to do Shakespeare in the theatre I decided to do a production of Julius Caesar in the open air with modern dress and he asked me to play the part of Mark Antony which if anybody of your viewers know the play will know it's a fantastic part I had no idea about this uh, about what it was but I loved it uh, and thought oh this is fantastic the next term I did a, what's called a Gilbert and Sullivan opera which is quite unlike Shakespeare where I played a comedy role and uh, I just knew what I knew then that this was why I was here and I went home and said to my mother I want to do this and uh, instead of going oh my god which many mothers do she was grateful that she had a son who knew what he wanted to do and that's been like that ever since and uh, I've never wavered from that that's what I even in the very bad times I, that's what I do this is what whether I'm good or not is another matter I'm here to be what I am, and um, so my life changed at that moment. That is the short answer to your question. <laughs> et dans votre carrière, vous avez joué dans de nombreuses séries TV, dont Chapeau Melon et Bottes de Cuir. Well, Avengers was a big series at, at that time. Very much enjoyed, a very, very large audience for that. And to be in that was quite an honor then. And to do three with three different women, <laughs> three different girls in it was a great pleasure. And I have to say it was a great pleasure because they were also, although the pressure of work was particularly for the leading players, was very, very hard indeed. They maybe were shooting three films at the same time, going from studio to studio. Despite that, they were so nice and considerate and warm and friendly that I always loved to do an Avengers. So. The same with The Saint. I did two, two, two or three Saints with Roger, and uh, that's when we started to have a friendship. Et vous avez joué avec Roger Moore dans un James Bond, encore et toujours un méchant. Always the villain, and the problem with playing villains, I mean, they're lovely to play, but you never get to do the sequel. Because <laughs> you're always... <laughs> I think it was a very good film. I'm, I'm in it, so I can't really tell, but I can from the rest of it. I can see it's very well made. And it's, What they decided was that um, for too long, Bond had relied upon magic. I, I, you know, press a button and that building would blow up. But they decided this one, simply Bond does everything better than anybody else. He's a better skier, better shooter, bobsleigh, anything, which is a good idea. And also that the villain, or the villains as we think the other way around at the beginning of the film, should be recognizable human beings, not people with hooks on their hands, or hats, or cats. <laughs> They were recognizable human beings with their own motives. And uh, that made it much easier to play. And that's, that's what I think made it, it was Bond against essential bad people. Not with tricks, but essentially bad, because they were working from the wrong motives. And that's what I thought made the film into a nice film. L'année d'avant, en 1980, vous étiez aussi le général Veers dans l'Empire Contre-Attaque, et même si l'on vous voit très peu, vous êtes reconnaissable instantanément. That sequence was all done on the top of a crane, with a blue screen behind me. I had no idea what it was, and in front of me was invented machinery, not the stuff you saw in the film. And there I was, and they shook me around, and, uh, as if I was in something, and I did the scene. And it wasn't until I saw the film that I knew what I was driving. <laughs> I'd never seen it before. But, wow, that was it! <laughs> This great big mechanical giraffe. <laughs> Vous avez également joué avec un autre James Bond qui n'en était pas encore un à l'époque, Pierce Brosnan dans Remington Steel. Yes, I did. I've known Pierce for a long time. His then wife was in for your eyes only. Sadly, she died. Beautiful woman. And such a nice woman. So bright and intelligent. It was a terrible thing for, for Piers, that. The reason I was in his show in was because at that time the money was difficult between America and it was cheaper for Americans to come to England to make a series. So they came over and employed British actors 
and in one episode I got a part. That's the first time I met Piers, but now we know each other quite well. Et puis, à la fin des années 80, vous avez été choisi pour jouer encore un méchant. Always villain. Toujours, mais celui-ci est particulier puisqu'il était dans Indiana Jones. Wonderful part, and to be directed by Spielberg and Harrison Ford and an oh, wonderful. I actually auditioned to play that horrible Nazi sergeant, and I didn't get it. And I got home and I rang my agent and said, no, that's no good. He said, well, okay, uh, but they want to see you for Walter Donovan. So go along and be American and do your... I got Walter Donovan, I mean, quite extraordinary. And his death remains absolutely amazing. We started doing that, working on that three months before the film. They took a mask of me and worked and made lots of prosthetics on it. And they used all those when we did the film. Three days to shoot that 12 second sequence. And in fact, he's such a clever editor. That in fact, he only used about a quarter of all that preparation. There was much more of it. And that wonderful thing of the hair being grown. They filmed it backwards from behind and a man pulled it like that and up it went. And so what you saw was it coming down. This is very clever. Pour beaucoup de gens, lorsque vous vieillissez en accéléré, vous ressemblez à Christopher Lloyd. Extraordinary, from Back to the Future. Absolutely. And one is a skeleton. Well, I continued to be Julian Glover until he fell over. And I wasn't able to act a skeleton. I couldn't do it. I'm a very good actor, but that was beyond me. Vous pourriez peut-être revenir dans Indiana Jones 5 en squelette <rire> Yes, I could come back as a skeleton. Récemment, vous avez joué dans Game of Thrones et au début, je ne vous avais d'ailleurs pas reconnu avec cette barbe. Oh, yeah. Comment avez-vous décroché ce rôle When it was announced, we had no idea. We just all the actors went up for it because it was a, a big series we were going to start. We had no idea about the success that we would have. I auditioned three times for different roles. Didn't get them. I didn't mind much because we didn't know how successful it was going to be. But then, an actor I know quite well called Roy Dutrice was going to play it and he got very ill. So they called me up and asked me to do it. I can tell that story because it's okay because he came back later in another part, which was a great relief to me. So I don't feel guilty anymore. But that's how I got the part and uh, I, I love doing that thing. Except for the weight of the... Ah oui, les chaînes. Too heavy made of iron. It was so heavy, I had to have a wrestler's belt and a cord down the back, tied it to that. I played it anyway like this. I would have been on the floor with the weight of this thing. I'm still here, <laughs> despite the film. I had a good death scene. The irony, he was the oldest character in the show and killed by children. It's typical of Game of Thrones. You see things like that all the time. You suddenly realize that, and oh yes, of course, because that happened. Game of Thrones a aussi été l'occasion pour vous de retrouver Diana Rigg, avec qui vous aviez joué dans Chapeau Melon et Bottes de Cuir. When we were both very young actors for the Royal Shakespeare Company at Stratford on Avon, she was there playing good parts, and I got to know her then, before she became so famous for the Avengers. The Avengers made her, and she's now playing that wonderful part in Game of Thrones. C'était une sorte de réunion, non? Well, it wasn't a reunion because we see each other quite often, and it was oh good. Now I've got somebody to talk to. <laughs> vous avez maintenant 85 ans, mais vous tournez toujours avec la même énergie. Well, aren't I lucky? I do work at it. I used to go to the gym a lot. I'm too old for that now. I can't do the exercise. You know. But I go to an old person's workout, mostly sitting down, where we exercise every part of our body. And I do that twice a week now. I'm not fantastic physically, but I can still stand up and I can still walk. And I am blessed that I can still remember the words. Several of my colleagues of the same age don't do theatre anymore. They do television because you can have it written, perhaps, if you want it, or something in your ear. Even Michael Gambon, fine actor, he won't do theatre anymore. Mind you, he earns much more money not, not doing theatre. <laughs> well, uh, okay, good. Well, thank you very much. It's been most enjoyable. And goodbye, viewers.